Today we're going to bring you Gilgamesh. We're going to talk about Gilgamesh because we have summoned Gilgamesh and a lot of players are actually very interested in how Gilgamesh will perform. We've seen some battles, we have some reports, and we're going to break it down for you. Is Gilgamesh the next OP archer in Rise of Kingdoms? My name is Shinchi42. We are an archer specialist in Rise of Kingdoms and today we're bringing you a whole new commander and we're going to review this commander and see if it's actually worth it for you to invest on a Gilgamesh. If you guys enjoy Rise of Kingdoms content, consider subscribing and turn your notifications on. So first thing that we're going to talk about, Gilgamesh, you can obtain Gilgamesh from the Wheel of Fortune. Now, Gilgamesh is a very unique archer commander because this is an archer commander that does an enemy health reduction at 30% for 3 seconds. That is absolutely a huge factor. Now, here's the thing. Many would say that you might want to do Gilgamesh as a primary commander so that you can reduce the health of the enemy first. And then once you have your secondary commander hit, the enemy's health would be much reduced. So that's one factor that you definitely should consider. Now, another thing that we need to also consider is the talent tree. Talent tree, as we know, plays a major role. Sometimes it does trump over the skills. Sometimes you might want to look into the talent tree and say, what if this is not a skills talent tree? What if this was, hypothetically, this was a, um, a uh, what is, um, uh, what is this, uh, 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 mobility. What if there was a mobility talent tree, right? You don't want to use Gilgamesh as a primary commander then, right? Just hypothetically speaking. So, Gilgamesh as a primary commander will be able to reduce the enemy's health first, which is great. Gilgamesh has a 10% health bonus for archers. All damage dealt by archers at 20%. Now, here's a key thing in here as well. This is a condition. Let's read this. Archers led by this commander gain 10%. Increased health and deals 10% increased damage to enemy troops that have a fewer than 50% of units remaining. So it's a condition. Now, here's the thing. It doesn't have to be led by 100% archers. So that's interesting, right? Another thing in here is that fewer than 50% of units remaining. So this thing doesn't take effect unless it's 50% less. So Gilgamesh will have that benefit first with the 30% bonus. So the longer the battle goes the better Gilgamesh will perform. And of course, in the open field battle, when you're finding those 50% health units already, then you're definitely gonna wreck them out. Archers led by this commander gain 10% increased attack when attacking cities and stronghold. This is the best thing about it. This is the conquering part of Gilgamesh and gain 1% attack bonus for every six seconds, which is absolutely huge. The bonus lasts for 10 seconds and stack up to six times. So attack bonus in your 20%, attack increase per stack is going to be 5%. So the longer the battle is, the better this is as well. Troop led by this commander take 2% less damage from normal attack. Their attack have 30% chance of inflicting a blood craving debuff on targets. Afflicted troops suffer damage when healed. This debuff lasts 3 seconds and can trigger at most every 5 seconds. So as we can see, Gilgamesh has some tanking ability, can absorb 10% normal attack damage, right? This is normal attack. It doesn't have to relate with anything with skills or counterattack. It's only the the turn-by-turn the turn attack, all right? Now, this one has a blood craving debuff on the target afflicted troops suffer damage when healed, all right? So th there was some concern about um, with pairing with Ramses because Ramses cancels heal. But keep in mind, this is a passive attack. This is not an active skill. This is a turn. This is a 30% chance. So it's not always going to land into the perfect situation. This debuff will last three seconds and can trigger at most out of every five seconds. So there's some conditions there as well. Now the expertise of Gilgamesh is going to amplify this Enkidu's path. By the way, if you guys don't know Enkidu, that's actually like I think Gilgamesh's best friend or something. They were like foes in the beginning and they become friends at the end. You can actually read it in the his in the stories in here. What this does is that it will increase the damage factor of 700 
and then take 15% increased skill damage, which is absolutely huge. Coming from a very high active skill damage commander in here is huge. So pairing it up with Ramses as well is great. Now, here's the thing. Ramses also have a debuff, which is decreasing of the defense, though, although it's going to be only for two seconds. So with that combination, it makes it really tanky because Ramses has a skill damage taken reduction, and then Gilgamesh has a normal attack damage reduction. So now let's take a look into the battle reports in here. We have some report from MT. I cannot read the Chinese name. I'm sorry. Um, but Duck Kaiser as well, which is high by in our Discord. So... We saw various reports in here, which is very interesting. Gilgamesh, Nebuchadnezzar. So Gilgamesh being primary commander in here did not really succeed. I think this was a very mismatch because it's going against the um, cavalry versus um, the archers. Now, I've seen some reports with Jawiga and Saladin. That's actually a very interesting combination. So this one did not win. You know, majority are going to be Cavs. It has to be still mixed troop in here. There's a little bit of mix there. Allow that YSS um, skill, you know, ability to really perform well. Here's the buff in here. So the Gilgamesh Nebuchadnezzar, I think it's okay. I've seen some Ramses in Gilgamesh. It was actually pretty decent in my opinion. This is about 1 million power loss, about 100k. And actually, no, maybe it's a little bit close to being the same. All right, but it's kind of hard to really determine unless you do a proper testing because in this report, you don't know how much reinforcement was coming in on both sides. And you can see the remaining troops in here was really, really low for the archers. Now, one thing that we want to look into as well, when you're looking into battle report, I don't know how detailed you guys go into, but just understanding the first few hits in here, makes a lot of difference now you can see the green will be the jawiga so this is the defense and then the red is the rallier and you can see it's relatively pretty close onto the attacks in here now there's a proc in here from the enemy um you can see almost double there all right so let's take a look into other reports in here this is going to be a pakal and herald against jawiga and saladin all right, let's take a look into the reports in here. Just the first few hits, relatively close as well, and did a much better job in there. All right, I think it's just really the reinforcement. Ooh, insane amount of reinforcement there. And then let's take a look into the next ones in here. All right, now here's, honestly, Jawiga is actually very good. So as you can see here, it was about 150K losses in here for the Ramses and Gilgamesh. So, do we determine then that Ramses is not the ideal primary commander from here? Honestly, I don't know yet until we see the testings. They've used a lot of calves in here, some archers in there just to have that mix troops in there. This is a full archers, some T4, some T5 for both sides. Here's a troop buff. Higher attack, I think, 233. Um, let's take a look into the other one. That's 233. And um, what about this one? Troop buff. 203179. So you guys can kind of go back into the battle reports and kind of estimate, or sorry, not estimate, kind of calculate the differences in there. All right. So here's the thing it's hard to determine which one is better because of the reinforcements, and we don't really know the talent that they're using as well. Um, Ramsey seems like the ideal primary commander, but of course, Gilgamesh being a primary commander is absolutely great as well. What if it's going to be a Gilgamesh Ramses? uh i don't know i don't know yet if that's gonna work out very well but having that uh but having that skill tree would be able to proc that skill the active skill much further so that could make a lot of difference um and also equipments and stuff but what the key thing in here that i like what they have done is they put a saladin in here this is just we got in saladin right relatively close battle now, one thing that we need to understand with this Saladin, it is not a Max Saladin, right? This is not a Max Saladin. Still did a great job. And you can see the budget um, investment compared to the Yi Sun Sin, right? That is so much cheaper than maxing a Yi Sun Sin, but did a great great job on the Jadwiga and Saladin. That was a good job. Saladin has an ability to absorb skill damage, if you guys don't know, right? Troops led by this commander take 30% skill damage reduced that's huge and those two archers are massively hitting 
very high skill damage. And then if you do expertise saladin, it can hit harder. But for the most part, you don't do a expertise saladin. But if you do, it could have done so much better. So I'm really curious to see what a max saladin uh, result would be in comparison to YSS when it comes to report. Because it's kind of not fair when you're looking into two reports. Because the saladin defense with Jadwiga definitely did a massive damage and massive massive uh, report that is actually really really good because of the investment just such a budget investment that did such an amazing job here's a Yi Sun Sin and Wu um, still did even a great job in here honestly but I feel like there's not much reinforcement coming in from from the attacker it seems like it's a pretty short reinforcement in here so that's another thing oh that's yeah this is a lot more reinforcement but there's so much siege in there oh my goodness now that's probably why it comes to relatively even when it comes to the deads in here but oh my god if they actually defended that properly that would have been very interesting let's take a look at another one in here what about a xiang yu a chandra did not do that well going against that all right it absorbed that damage did not do good i even saw a um, I think I even saw an Attila and Takeda. I thought at first, I'm like, oh, Attila and Takeda, great. There's no um, skill damage from Attila and Takeda. You know, Jadwiga has that, you know, ability to absorb the skill damage. It might not do good. But honestly, it still did a wonderful job. Great defense in here. Um, relatively very, very close matchup when it comes to the damage in here. They did a huge, huge skill hit there. Um, yeah, da Attila Takeda definitely undermatched with this two combination in here. Very interesting. Uh, let's take a look at the troop buff. Now you can see that 281% attack, huge defense, and huge health. That makes a lot of difference in there. But like I said, again, the Saladin, he is not a max Saladin. If that is a max Saladin, it would have done a lot more damage as well. All right, so here... Um, I think it's pretty much the same, same reports that we have seen already. So very interesting reports. I want to know what you guys think about these reports that you guys just have seen. Are you going to be investing in a Gilgamesh? Uh, and um, what is your plan? Now, here's the thing as well. Um, we only look at the rally reports, right? But what about open field battle? All right, open field battle with Gilgamesh, I think is going to be really good. You can even do a Gilgamesh YSG so you can practice even further. I like that idea. You can practice skill further and faster. I don't know. I would, I would put, uh, it's kind of hard because I want to do a YSG primary so I can hit the AOE faster. But then if I can hit the reduce health faster, it will be better. So it's a little bit challenging there. But I think Gilgamesh YSG would be good with that whatever synergy you do, whatever uh, whoever is primary. Bolt will do good because let's say you are a 5 Archer March and you're reducing the health of the enemy by 30% for 3 seconds. And that cast, that skill cast right away before your other March's skill cast. Oh my god, it's such a great debuff. Wow. Think about Trajan comparing to this. Whoever invested in Trajan, you guys are going to be crying your sorry asses. Because Gilgamesh, man, 30% health reduction. That is so good. And then um, Archer health bonus, 30%, and are all you know damage dealt. So when it's like 50% less units, we already know this. We talked about this. But imagine a combination of Gilgamesh and YSG. Isn't that great? Now, what if what if you're you're not a big spender? Let's say hypothetically you don't have Yi Song Ye. What type of combinations can you do? I would say go for a Herman. All right, so this is great because now you're reducing the, the health of the enemy. And also now you're going to be reduce the rage and silence the enemy as well. And not just that, you're also going to be gaining some rage as well. You have a trigger chance of 10% to gain additional 100 rage, meaning you can cast this further and as well as you can cast Gilgamesh skill further. Wow. You can do a Herman. If you're not a big spender, you can still get Gilgamesh as long as you do have a Herman. And it will do amazing job for you. Now, here's the thing. Gilgamesh don't have to be led by archers 100%, right? So you're not going to have this benefit, this 30%, the health bonus. So here's the thing also. Maybe you ran out of troops one day. What if you do a mix 
of archer infantry set up. Now, maybe you have 50% archers, you have 50% infantry. What infantry would you use? All right, so here's the thing. You can definitely use Zun 2. So look at this. This is a weird combo, but might be very interesting. Uh, Zun 2, 50% infantry, 50% um, archer. So put a Zun 2 there. All right, you can absorb more damage, right? You get health bonus, of course, for the infantry. Increase skill damage bonus, and then you can also have this skill. So whenever you uh, target more players, you gain 50 rage per each target. You're hitting the AOE, you're gaining a lot, and then your specific target will also reduce their health. So I like this because it allows some of the lower spenders free to play when they run out of troops, especially in KVK. It's a very possible thing and it happened to me well now nah, i didn't run out of archers but i ran out of infantry but it's something that you can do if you're an archer main and you run out of troops one day and you can you want to do some mixed troop because this does not say 100 percent archers in comparison to commanders like edward it will say uh when troops led by this commander consist only of archers this statement does not state that it has to be consisting of only archers. It says your archers led by this commander gain 10% increased health. So if you have 50% archers, 50% of that will increase their health. With that being said, guys, hopefully you find this video very helpful. If you enjoy this content, smash that thumbs up. And I will see you guys again next time.